Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, I'm going to go over um, these comments here. Uh, appreciate them. Uh, I'm going to start off with Roderick1983. And Roderick says, I think most of the content mentioned about the rapture happened 70 AD after slash during the destruction of Jerusalem because it mentions the tribes of the earth those elect were marked 144,000 of the tribes back then his enemies in Jerusalem knew all their demise was from the one they persecuted they saw his sign 70 AD all right so Roderick I, I've been over this uh, numerous times and I can show you in scripture all right but ultimately um, you have to believe the Word of God in order to see it all right so this doctrine that of 70 AD is based on the idea that the Antichrist is the Messiah all right and I don't know why you would believe that the Antichrist is the Messiah but that's what this doctrine is all about now 70 AD has nothing at all to do with anything in the Bible there's nothing in the Bible that is related to 70 AD nothing at all and this comes from this 70 AD stuff comes from Daniel 9 and when it talks about here in verse 26 uh, the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary and so that's the destruction of the temple that they teach that they teach that happened in 70 AD okay here's the problem um, that what okay how do I see this whatever happened in 70 AD it doesn't matter this here is talking about Jesus laying down his life all right Jesus is the one that it, he is the temple okay he's the one that was killed he laid down his life they destroyed the temple and then he built it back up in three days All right, that's what this is talking about so if you read John chapter 2 <clears throat> excuse me in John chapter 2 Jesus answered and said unto them destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up then said the Jews forty and six years was this temple and building and wilt thou rear it up in three days but he spake of the temple of his body see the Jews thought they were talking about the physical building on earth Jesus was talking about the body now God was manifest in the flesh okay and God came into our flesh that we're in and God destroyed this flesh this temple and built it back up to an imperishable temple an incorruptible temple an immortal temple 
And he has promised to return. And when he returns, we will be lifted up, gathered up, and changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we will be fitted, if you will, with this new temple, with this new body. All right. So let's go to First Corinthians three, verse sixteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Don't you know it, Roderick? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Right? Now, it's important to know that when you are born of God, you are clean or perfect in the eyes of God. All your sins are removed. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you think of the temple of God not as a f flesh, a fleshly temple but as a spiritual temple when you are born of the Spirit of God then that temple is pure okay and that's we read in John chapter 3 Jesus says ye must be born again that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit marveled not that I said unto thee ye must be born again alright so this <clears throat> 70 AD the destruction of the temple it's not supported by the Bible anywhere at all it's not uh, it's a complete lack of understanding of Daniel 9 okay this is where it stems from. Make no mistake about it. You look at the core of this teaching, it's all centered on the misinterpretation of Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. And so the idea is that in 70 AD, this temple was destroyed, and then <clears throat> somehow, I, I don't know, Somehow the Antichrist, I guess, magically confirms a covenant with many for one week. All right, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. <clears throat> and the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Somehow, um, this gets magically turned into the Antichrist. It's I can't even comprehend it. Um, but what it, what's apparent to me is that they're saying the Antichrist is the Messiah. Alright. So the truth of the matter is Jesus is the one that makes an end of sins. Jesus is the one that makes reconciliation for iniquity. Jesus is the one that brings in everlasting righteousness. Alright? So Jesus is the one that destroyed and restored the temple which is the body <clears throat> okay 
Jesus is the one <clears throat> that was cut off. All right, he's the one, and not for himself though. Right, he he died. He laid down his life, not for himself, but for our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And it, it was the people of the prince aka Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men all right the Jews the people of the prince all right <clears throat> so when they are when they came and destroyed the city and the sanctuary the temple that's when they killed the Lord Jesus all right now and he shall confirm the covenant with one for many with many for one week that's the promise that he will return for us all right, that's the promise that he will give us everlasting life, and that promise was, um, I guess, confirmed upon his death, right? And then he rebuilt the temple with the promise that he will return, and the the promise that we have everlasting life through him and we do right now okay and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease because he was the perfect sacrifice okay That's why the sacrifice and oblations ceased. Let's see if we can. For it is not, in Hebrews 10, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It's not possible. So he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease by being that perfect sacrifice for sins okay this the sacrifice oblation overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate and he did that by laying down his life even until the consummation which is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ at the end of of the world this is when we are transformed into our glorified body All right this is when we are lifted up into the air to meet the Lord in the air this is when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye All right this is when we are separated from this world delivered up out of this world All right. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. That's This is the separation. We are saved and they are destroyed. The, the unsaved are destroyed. Alright, so nowhere in Daniel 9 is it, does it imply that this is talking about the Antichrist. You have to imagine that the Messiah is the Antichrist. Now I get it, it sells books, people make movies out of it and all that sort of stuff. It sounds fantastic, right? It sounds fantastic that in the future there's going to be some guy that's going to come along and confirm a covenant with many for one week. The doctrines that spew out of this 
are are endless and nonsensical. There's no reason to believe any of it. This is pretty simple, straightforward stuff. All right, and we saw all this unfold in the New Testament when Jesus laid down his life. And it was a big event. Yeah, absolutely huge. So uh, I don't know why you're buying into this 70 AD stuff, Roderick. It's not supported by the Bible anywhere. If you actually read Daniel, the book of Daniel, and specifically Daniel chapter 9, and you still believed it, God help you. What can I do? Right? There ain't nothing I can say to get you to see it because you don't want to see it, but once you actually believe the Word of God, then there's no reason why you can't see it. Right? If you believe this is from God, and it is from God above, these are not the words of men. If you believe these are the words of men, the veil is upon your heart. These are not the words of men. This is the Word of God. And it all starts right there. Alright, so let me go make sure I didn't miss nothing here. I think most of the content mentioned about the rapture happened 70 AD. Okay. Right, I'm going to touch on this in a second right here. The rapture. Alright, those elect were marked of the tribes back then. Alright, just throwing poop, see what sticks, right? His enemies in Jerusalem knew all their demise was from the one they persecuted they saw his sign 70 AD. Alright, so that never happened. I mean, they just throwing poop on the wall and seeing if it might stick. I don't know why you believe that stuff. It's not in the Bible. Alright. Let's see. High Roller 1983-0904 says, I can't wait to get naked and go up to the big house personally. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that phrase. Can't wait to get naked. Uh, let me think of... Let me think of a verse that might help support. Second Corinthians five, verse two: For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Alright. So. Um, yeah. I can't wait to get naked and go up to the house, to the big house, personally, okay. Just, uh, I throw out that get naked part, alright? But, yeah, glory to God, this is going to happen. It's going to happen, okay. Karen Lopez, here's a link for you, Jay, Bible scribe. All right, so I, I, uh, this is it right here. Bible scribe response to Joel Richardson and KNGDM Alliance on preterism. Automatic red flag preterism because none of these guys believe in the Bible. All right, I, I, so I don't know why you'd listen to anything they say. Uh, they don't have they don't have any understanding at all. all right. And it's incredible how you know how wrong people can be. They're not alone. But when it comes to preterism, you know, it's more than just low IQ. You could argue it's a combination of low IQ and not believing in the Bible. But I contend it's strictly because they do not believe the written Word of God. 
that they are in this delusion. And the Bible warns us of these people. So if you knew what the Bible says, you would know not to pay any attention to these guys at all. Okay? So, let's just read an excerpt here. Alright, let's start right here, I guess. Restore them to paradise. Restore them to Garden of Eden. Uh, Joel Richardson here. Of course, he doesn't believe that has happened, but in reality, what happened when Christ went to the grave is that he stormed Hades. He stormed Hades. He stormed Hades. He stormed Hades. A word that's not in the Bible. Okay, right there. He stormed Hades. Alright. He broke down the gates. He went in and rescued those people from Hades. Doubling down on his disregard for the Word of God. And then he brought them out. And it says in some of the early Christian writings including the Gospel of Nicodemus the Gospel of Nicodemus which is interesting here in John chapter 3 verse 10 Jesus answered and said unto him art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Nicodemus, the gospel. Wait, what, what was that? The gospel of Nicodemus? The good news of Nicodemus? That those people were then taken to paradise. What did Jesus say to the thief on the cross who had accepted him in his final moments of life? Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. That is the fulfillment of the thing that Joel Richardson is talking about, but he doesn't know, he doesn't understand it. And another thing that Joel mentioned. That's uh, so restoration to paradise. Alright, so blah, 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 blah. Let's look. There, there's just going to be. One error after another. I already know. I already know these guys. And they don't believe in anything the Bible says. And because of that you can't talk to them. You, you don't have that foundation. All right? You don't have that foundation where the Bible says this. And that's the foundation of what we're going to believe and what we're going to teach. They don't have that foundation. They're just making up whatever they want. And that's just, it's stupid, in my opinion. It shows that they don't, they have a veil over their heart because they don't believe the written word of God. Now, let's break this down. Let's, let's make one point here. Alright, let's make one point here. Alright, so he's going to say that Jesus went to Hades, okay, went to the grave, and rescued those people, and brought them out. Alright, then he points to Nicodemus. Okay, so the idea is that Jesus went to the grave and then he resurrected with uh, these people in Hades in the grave and that the resurrection happened I don't, let's see if he, I don't know if he talks about it more probably a good idea not to bring it up Yeah, it looks like he just bounces around. Alright, so what they teach... 
is that all right so what they teach is that the resurrection already happened all right the resurrection already happened now he would be right if he said Jesus is the resurrection and that he's the only one that ascended to heaven and that no that nobody gets resurrected and changed until the end of the world now you have to make a distinction if you're at a restaurant and somebody chokes out and they flatline taken to the hospital and, or the ambulance and and they resurrect him back to life where they shock him you know they pull the food out and they shock him get their heart going and all that they resurrect him back to life that's not the same thing okay that's not the same thing as the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the resurrection he has promised for us it's not the same thing all right so when we read about when Jesus came up out of the grave or when he was resurrected after three days and there were others who were resurrected with them and they went into the city to witness none of those guys ascended to heaven all right all they did is they went into the city and witnessed too many that's it that's all they did all they did they didn't ascend to heaven right. only Jesus ascended right. even David has not ascended to heaven okay so there's an order of things Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept he is the first resurrection All right. so in 1st Corinthians 15 we read that not now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming and then comes the end all right for he must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet so nobody has ascended to heaven except for the Lord Jesus Christ right, I want to go back to John chapter 3 real quick Jesus says no man has ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man which is in heaven and so nobody has ascended to heaven. He's the only one. All right. Jesus is God Almighty. And he has came into our body, into our flesh. And he has led the way for us. And just as we are appointed to die, he died. He died, he went to the grave, and then he 
resurrected, came back to life, and ascended up to heaven. All right, the same thing is going to happen to us that are born of God. Right, he has led the way for us, and we're just going to follow Him. All right, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So He's lifted up with the promise that He will return for us. All right, and He will return at the last day. Right? Jesus says, "In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also." So, when He returns, we're going to be lifted up. Right? We're going to be lifted up at the end of the world. Right? Even in First Thessalonians four, same thing. Same thing. All right. Same thing for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right, this has not already happened. This is what's going to happen at the end of the world. The voice of the archangel with the trump of God happens at the end of the world. And this world is not ended. And then, when, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right. So this has not happened. All right. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. This is at the end of the world. All right. This is not a two-part event. This is a one-time deal. Alright, so let's go back. So this idea of uh, everything's already happened, this idea of preterism was warned about in the Bible in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred. These guys have erred. Every single thing that they're trying to promote is in error. It's pretty incredible, really. Pretty incredible. You got plain English right here in the Bible speaking directly against these guys that teach preterism. They can't see it even though it's right there in front of their face because the veil is upon their heart. The veil is upon their heart because they will not believe that these words come from God. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. See, there's a warning here, Karen. There's a warning about these people. Right? Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having the seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Alright. So, these people that do not believe, if we go to Isaiah 66, because they don't believe, the veil is upon their heart, right? In Isaiah 66, verse 4, I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. So these guys, they have the word of God right in front of them and they can't see it because they don't believe it they don't hear they don't see they don't understand the word of God Karen All right. 
if you want to talk specifically about something else in that Bible, let's let's talk about it. All right? Let's talk about it. Whatever it is. Okay. Thousand year reign, Satan's little season, okay. So the thousand year reign of Christ is not in the Bible, right? Satan's little season happens at the end of the world. The Bible is very clear about that. Revelation 20 is very clear about that. And it's lunacy to teach anything else. It really is. Satan's little season. And again, this is another example of people not believing... what they're reading when they suggest that we are in Satan's little season. Even though it's right there in front of their eyes, they cannot see it. Because they do not believe the written word of God. They don't believe God. Right, so if we go here in verse 7, when the thousand years are expired, it's the end of the world, right? It's the end of the world. And Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And for what reason? Well, it tells us, doesn't it? To go out to see the nations, to gather them together. This, that's the whole reason. At the end of the thousand years, Satan gathers together the unsaved. At the end of the thousand years, Jesus sends his angels to gather together the elect. This is the great separation. All right, this is prophesied all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Genesis 3, verse 15, The Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In Matthew 13, we read about the parable of the wheat and the tares. It's the separation that takes place at the end of the world. The wheat are gathered into the barn. And the barn is above. And the tares are put in bundles on the ground and they are burned. Alright, so all throughout the Bible this is consistent. Consistent. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is the gathering together of the wheat into the barn. Alright? Into the barn. And then the, the tares are put in bundles at our feet. Alright, so when we read here, Verse 9, they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. The beloved city is above. Right. The beloved city is above. It has to be above. The Bible even tells us it's above. It has to be above, and the Bible is consistent about that. It is true through and through, all throughout the Bible. Right. Consistent and true. From the first word to the last word. Galatians 4 verse 26. Jerusalem which is above is free and the mother of us all. Jerusalem above. Jerusalem above. The beloved city. Jerusalem is the beloved city. And so when Jesus comes at the end of the world. He gathers together the elect. We are lifted up into the air. Into the beloved city. Into Jerusalem which is above which is above. Right, it's consistent all throughout the Bible. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. Right, consistent. And this is when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Right? Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right? In Revelation 3, Verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Consistent. Consistent all throughout the Bible. Alright, so, um, 
this idea, the little season, is happening now. It, it's nonsensical because what you're doing is you're saying that Satan is gathering you together to battle. You're condemning yourself. All right? Why would you do that? You're claiming that Satan is deceiving you and gathering you to battle against God. Why would you believe that? that puts you on the wrong side of the fence all right and then what happens is fire comes down from God and devours all of them that are on the earth you're putting yourself on earth and fire comes down from God and devours you by your own words you've condemned yourself why would you do that doesn't make any sense does it if you are being deceived by Satan right now then God is gonna send fire from heaven and devour you right I mean Think about this here. They went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints. About where's the camp of the saints? Where's the camp of the saints? When this happens, where's the camp of the saints? Huh? Where? I mean, are you going to say that the camp of the saints and the beloved city is that wicked place over in the Middle East again that puts you out of the picture doesn't it by your own words <clears throat> you've condemned yourself All right. you ever notice that the camp compass the camp of the Saints where's that at the beloved city where's that at How do you put yourself in the camp of the saints and the beloved city? How do you do that? If this is happening right now, how do you do that? Is fire coming down from God out of heaven right now and devouring them? Because this is what's happening. If that, if this, if we're in Satan's little season, then so also is this in that little season it's just so it's so nonsensical so nonsensical and it, it's very simple that's the, the astonishing part to me is that this is so simple very direct very consistent with everything that we're reading in the Bible but why is it that nobody gets this right It couldn't be plainer. It couldn't be more simple and easy to understand. It really couldn't. And I, I'm convinced that the reason why people don't see it is simply because they do do not trust the written word of God. That's the only thing. It's the only reason. All right. The only reason. I mean, it doesn't even take five minutes to read this chapter. And people can read it over and over and over and still not see it. Why? Because they don't believe it. It's interesting to me. So anyways, uh, Karen, thank you for that. Uh, just uh, You post a, an hour link, and I'm not going to watch a second of it. Because I already know. Preterism, big red flag. These guys mock the Word of God. They don't believe a single thing that's written in it. And they teach that the resurrection has passed already and overthrow the faith of many. And what, what do they overthrow your faith too? Karen, you don't believe the Word of God either? And Roderick, you? You're going to buy into it? 
you don't trust God, but you'll trust these kids. Well, you think these kids have special knowledge that you don't have access? I mean, they pretend, don't they? This guy's pretending to have special knowledge that you don't have that you don't know the special knowledge that comes from Nicodemus the gospel good news of Nicodemus and they think this extra knowledge comes from these spaced out books not realizing not understanding that special knowledge comes from God when he opens your eyes and that happens when you believe the written Word of God All right. and they don't understand that because they don't believe the written Word of God even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart. Even today, when people read Moses, they can read it just like anybody else. But they can't understand it because the veil is upon their heart. The veil is upon their heart because they don't believe God. They don't believe what they're reading. And because they don't believe what they're reading, they can't see it. They can't hear it. They can't understand it. Yeah. That's amazing. But it, <laughs> we see, I'm seeing it all the time. I hope you can see it too. I really do, because that means your eyes are open. Okay, all right, that's it. Um, if you have any more questions or if you want to follow up you want to dig deeper into this Roderick what are you doing man what are you doing 70 AD you really believe that the Messiah is the Antichrist what's wrong with you buddy I thought you were smarter than that really <laughs>